Hey guys, this is Lamel Guy. In today's video, we will try to write a Python code in order to wrap our show screen function in the last video to the multiprocessing. So, in this video, we are just talking about the multiprocessing implementation. Okay, we start with just definition of that what kind of libraries that we want to add to our program. Let's uh, try with uh, multiprocessing. Yeah, in, in the last video, if you check the last video from uh, grabbing a screen with Python in a really fast way, uh, you can find the program there. So I just copy paste the program here. So this is the program and I just copy paste the code here. It's a very simple code, so you don't need to add a lot, a lot of complication into it. These are the libraries that we need for that code. We just keep them there. All the parameters are set. We define the function for it because we want to use it as a separate process. So we want to capture the screen first and then in the separate process, we want to process that screen. So we want to isolate the capturing process and the processing of those captures. Just as an example, I use another worker function and this worker function is just showing the image that we capture from a screen option. Basically, we move everything from here to the worker. Oh, I, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, now it's working. Uh, we need a while loop here as well because we want to keep it going. That's about it. Okay, okay, okay. So what we, you can see here that we don't have this variable Im image BGR, which we need to make it to the array variable and to show it in the CV2. And this is the variable that we need to actually pass between processes. So first we try to write the process down in the main function. Then we also add the buffer in a queue functionality of the process in multiple processing in order to handle this variable between a screen and worker in our program. Then we start with the main function. Let's write the main function. First we need to get the context. Uh, and we get the context by mp dot get context and we use here a spawn as a context and a spawn means that it will start a fresh python interpreted when it wants to uh, run this process so there are several other options like fork or fork server you can search it in the internet for this functionality a spawn is good enough for us because we just needed to start a new process. Then we define the queue, which we get it from the context that we defined. And we need to define our process now. The first process we define is the process to capture the image. So we have the target of a screen function. And we define the argument here. The, the argument is the variable that we want to pass between the worker and the screen. Actually, from a screen to the worker. That's the only way that we want to do in this particular example. But in principle, you can do in both directions. It's just a buffer. Nothing, nothing really fancy about it. Then I define it as a queue, uh, which we have here the definition of the queue. This is the queue that we define. Then we start this process. The another process is, we can use the same name because we already started the another process. Uh, the another process is this one, target worker with the arguments of 
and we start the process good so we define the queue we define the processes uh, let's see if uh, we need everything else of course now we need to pass these variables between these two functions actually comment these ones I just wanted to make sure that the processes will be started when we start our program that's the process then let's show the image also in the another one to just make sure that we also uh, we are also capturing the image as well when the process is started let's check the program we have everything set then let's run the program okay we have one error the error is about actually we define here arguments that we want to pass this argument to this target but we, in the functions we didn't define that so i just simply put q in those things so then those functions are getting these arguments perfect uh, we have our screen sharing here so you can see the share screen uh, let's stop the program because we have a lot of print value here let's disable the printing for the seconds of the let's start it again to eliminate this print function we can see this print function to make sure that both processes are running yes this process is running and this process as well is running perfect then we have everything set again we move this functionality to the worker okay good uh, we don't need this print functionality here but we need this one then let's add it here in order to add this functionality we need to add it to our queue and in order to add it to the queue i prefer here to add this mp array directly there uh, then in the worker side we just im show the variable without uh, adding additional functionality okay then it means that we put in our queue the np array of image bgr so here already we put the np array then in the worker side we actually add q dot get let's try this function to see if this is working so what we expect from these two processes is that a screen function just capture a screen and send the data to the worker function and worker function shows the data let's see if it does that yes actually is there the functionality is working let's clean this part of the code in order to not confuse us that what we are talking about here from the get we call it image array to just add more clarity and we add the image array here everything uh, will be captured in the sct screen we don't need actually this line sct screen then it grabs the monitor then you put all this transformation to the image then you make this rgb to vgr if you want to check the video that's how this code is actually working for grabbing a screen please uh, check the video which i add at the end of this video you can check it and to see how it's actually the function is working thank you guys this is the end of the video hope that you can use this functionality for your own projects uh, you can use this multi processing in order to uh, isolate your different functionalities and assign cpu resources on different things 
So it depends on how you want to get deep into it and how you want to actually make use of it. It's a useful functionality for your projects and hope that you enjoy it. If you enjoy the video and like this content to be continued, please like this video and please subscribe to the channel in order to not miss the future. And thank you. See you soon and hope that you stay safe during this Corona crisis.